Friends, I want to share something with you. Um, I'm witnessing something here in Harlem, uh, New York City, but God has changed the name of this community to Atla, that I've never seen in the history books, I've, I've never seen reported, um, and even, I don't know if you remember the, the famine in Biafra and Ethiopia, um, or if you go back to the if your last century days in places like Calcutta, India, what I'm witnessing here in New York City, Harlem, I have never seen, never read of, never heard of in terms of what's happening to a group of men and group of people in particular in terms of desperation and homelessness. I'm going to ask the engineer to just let the, the, the canopy or the, 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 the film just roll of pictures that I have taken over the past year of men that are sleeping on the streets. Um, and as it just go, moves around, what you're looking at is something I've never seen before. I've never seen in the history books. I've, I've never seen anything like this before. I've, there's been poverty. There were soup lines during the Great Depression. There's been poverty. I've seen drug use. I've I told you I got involved in this whole business of trying to help men back in the 1970s when I saw the drug be, drugs being used on 125th Street. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on Fulton Street in Brooklyn. I have never seen this level of desperation of homeless men, but men that are sleeping on the streets in the history of the world. I never read it. Never read about anything like this. What we see happening here in Harlem, and it's, 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 these are just some pictures I have taken. It's everywhere. I mean, it's, I, the one we took of the, of the young, this boy it, with a sheet over him and a cardboard underneath, and he and his girlfriend are sleeping on the sidewalk. This is unheard of. Even if a, one man is sleeping on the street, for another to be sleeping with his girlfriend, here's a man that's, he's got a beggar's cup, Usually they sit on the street, but this man is at his absolute worst. I have never seen the depravity of humanity at this rate. Even during the time of the Biafra or the Ethiopian famine and crises, the poor people still had dignity. None of them were at the level where they were so lost that they were on the streets. There were two men that just shot up heroin on where they got the money to shoot it. I've never drug dealer, Nicky Barnes, some of the great drug dealers of, of New York City has never seen anything like this. There's never been anything like in China or in v Vietnam of what's happening to these, these men and happening to this community. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I, I want to say something to you. I want to tell you that the truth hurts. But truth is not hate speech. I have, as a person, personally, I've lived the life, early years of my life when, you know, I was young and foolish and, and in many ways just didn't understand or care or give a damn, lived the life of the average black man. And mainly because I was fueled by the whole idea of civil disobedience of Dr. Martin Luther King, the Black Panthers, if you will, the Nation of Islam, Muslims, and just in general rioting by blacks, if you will, not their Hamites, but they call themselves that. And I got swept up into that and became a despicable human being uh, because of all this whole idea from Doc, started from Dr. King and and others, and, and uh, Rap Brown, and Stokely Carmichael, and Huey Newton, and Bobby Seale, and all of that. I got swept up in it as black religion, and black power, and blackness, as some sort of ideology of deliverance, which was a great departure from what had been the, uh, the religious and the biblical and understanding of the community of Hamite people now uh, prior to the 1960s. And so it led me to a despicable life. So I, I want to say to you, I'm going to say some things to you, but because I speak the truth uh, and it is counter to the lies 
and it and it and it eviscerates this whole idea of this sickness of blackness that's in the minds of black people. The first thing I want to say to you about so-called black people that they're Hamites. The first thing I want to say to you, which has led to what you see these men sleeping on the streets, is this: is that Hamite people now? You can call them black, so-called black. They have the most diverse skin color, if you will, variations than any other people on the planet. Now, that's going to lead to something else. Because they have this most diverse skin color of any people on the planet, uh, they primarily want to be a part of what is the superior people, and not that their people, their skin color is superior, but because the people are superior and they wear a different skin color, most black people, and they're Hamites now, they're Hamites, that's who they are, with this diverse skin color want to be white. Now, I can explain that to you, I'll give it to you. Uh, from Black Boy by Richard Wright, the books they've written, everything from Langston Hughes to others. That black folk, the Hamites, want to be white. But let's deal with the first issue. There's no other people on the planet. Look at this now. Because you, you understand, what is happening? Why is it that Hamite black people are so racist? No, Japhet people, white people, are Jewish people, they're racist too. But they can't hold a candle to the religion. Of, of black people's racism. And one of the big reasons is because they don't have a consistent color. The Hamite black people don't have a consistent color. And the one color they call themselves is not what they are. They're not black. The last thing they are is black. They're brown. They're high yellow. They're teasing tan. They're mahogany. They are a plethora of colors. But they're not black. Now, think about that for just a second. They're not black. You've never seen a black person in your entire life. Never. Maybe dark mahogany, but not black. And high yellow. Teeth and tan. Brown. And even albino. But not black. But there's no other people on the planet. Japhet people, ah, there could be some lighter, some darker, you know, but they all are within the, <laughs> the range of pink, or to use the Indian term, they're all within the range of pink or pale face. And they don't vary too far. <laughs> you know, or if you look at the Chinese people, you know, they all have black tops, black hair, and they're all within, some of them are a little darker, just a tinge darker, but they're all, and I don't use this pejoratively on any mean spirit, but they all have more of a yellowish tinge to themselves. You know, not this wide variety of Chinese colors. <laughs> and then in India, yeah, they have a darker brown India, they have black top hairs, but they have a darker brown, but not this wide variety that you see among black people. You know, black people can come in high yellow. Some of them can pass for white. <laughs> and some of them can pass for hot and tots. They're so dark. That's a problem. Now, it's not God's problem. But it's a problem for Hamite people. As a result of that, they're not consistent. And that inconsistency has spiritually drove them to hate their color, which has then driven them further to hate themselves as people, as persons, as entities. And you can, you can not want to jig it. You can not want to hear this. You can reject it. But here, we got a couple of things going on. Listen, you see, the, you saw these men. I don't have to put them back up. You saw these men on the street. You saw them. And that's just a smithering. I do once or twice. I went out to take these pictures. But see, the pinch-nosed Negro who works in the Japheth uh, Shemite, that's Jewish, office building, or has a good government job, or works at a college as a college student, he or she is just as wretched. They're just as lost. They're just as confused as the men you see sleeping on the street. Now, they may have a bed to go to at night and a roof over their heads, but their spirituality is just, if not worse, 
than the men sleeping on the street. And I'm here to deliver the truth. So we must understand these wide ranging colors that the Hamite people have is a problem. You say, well, God's the one that gave it. Well, I tell you, the, <laughs> the problem stems not so much from God. It stems from the fact that black the Hamite people uh, have had more sexual integration with Japheth people than, 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 than Japheth people have had sexual integration in terms of births with Hamite people. You see, because a large segment of while we have the pigmentation that we have that gives us our identification, a large segment of that pigmentation has been altered by centuries of infusion of Japheth semen into the womb of the Hamite woman, which gives us all these variations of colors. And, and that's where that come from. It wasn't God that established that. He didn't establish that. It, no, no, no. And you know, you Chinese and Japanese and Japan probably, I don't know if it's all true, maybe it is, it is. Japan don't want Hamite people living in Japan because they don't want Hamite men infusing their semen into the Japanese woman or the Chinese woman. I'm watching what's going on in Ukraine now. You got all those Ukrainians over there. All those women over there got blonde hair and fair skin. All the women though they got blonde hair and fair skin. But they got a few Africans over there now. And uh, well, you know, here, let me say something to you. This truth that I speak and the, the, the powers that be who understands that this confusion of colors, this confusion of people that has led these men to the street is profitable for the other two races of Shemite and Japheth, and they don't want my voice heard. When I heard that Barack Hussein Obama was calling himself black, knowing he's got a white mama, which was impossible to get a black man out of a white woman. You just can't do it. You can't get blood out of a turnip, you can't get blood out of a rock, and you can't get a black man out of a white woman. Full stop, case closed. But yeah, when I heard this, I said, now this is the devil at his best. This is the devil at his best, and it it worse than the Black Panthers, worse than Black Power with uh, the, the, the Stokely Carmichael, and 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 the, worse than the Black Nation of Islam, worse than all of that, worse than anything that's ever been done. The Mau Maus, worse than any of that was when they propagandized all of the Hamite people that Obama was black, and he's gonna be the president. That was, the, that was the most evil thing that has ever happened. We got two things going on now. One is that I've just never seen. I have never seen in the history books. I've never seen in the history. I've never seen in America the kind of brokenness, lostness of men that are sleeping on the streets with their girlfriends. I've just never seen anything that has never happened, not during the Great Depression, not during the Dust Bowl, moving from Oklahoma to Los Angeles. I've never, ever, not during the days of slavery, not even the worst days of Africa, not in the worst famines, not in the potato famine of Africa. There has never been anything as ugly. There has never been a man, there's never been a man on planet earth that is as low as the Hamite man is today. There is, he, there, th this is sub, if you will, basement low that the black man has found himself. And by the way, these are sleeping on the street are not the only one. It's those that work, those that have degrees, those that teach at colleges, at the university, the Cornell West, the Al Sharpton, the Eddie Gloss, the Van Jones, they are just as bad. They are low, they are sub-basement low. There's never been a time, there's never been a man on the earth that's as low as the Hamite man is today. Going back, one is, is that this great configuration of all these various colors has confused him. So he chooses, he secretly, now he'll never tell you this, but he secretly wants to be white. And the reason why he kills each other, the reason why is a, 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 a 
a black boy at 17 years old or 27 years old ain't got no problem in putting a bullet in the head of another black boy. Now, the Hamites is because he has no love for him. And then there's never been in the history of the world, there's never been in the history of the third never been, of a group of people who made songs glorifying, killing each other the way Hamite, black people they call themselves, have in this crap or rap music where they glorified killing each other and glorified bitching out the black woman and bitching out black children. No society has ever bitched out their women the way rap artists do. And we black, no society has ever bitched out honor the way black rappers, crap artists, have bitched out black people in general because at the core of all of this is hatred for themselves and who they are. Now, there are a couple of things I want to conclude with here. I told you that the truth hurts. It does. I have been marginalized. They won't let me speak this truth to the, to the world media. But this is what the world media, they have self Haters like Cornel West, who's a self-hater, Van Jones. They're all married to white women. They bitched out the black woman and all married white woman. And in glory, I don't know if he's married to a white woman or a white man. I don't know. But they promote these people who have bitched out the woman and who have a deep, deep self-hatred for themselves and this vast diversity of color. They hate. And the destruction of the Hamite people is below any level of any people on the totem pole, not even the Indians of America, the Native Americans. There has never been a place, listen, the totem pole, Hamite people have been there for a very long time at the bottom. Now they've not risen up. They've gone down beneath sub-earth sub on terms of who they are. And again, just because Van Jones or Eddie Glaude, or any of them have these, if you will, positions as pension those Negroes, they are in the same, they have the same, they're under the same, if you will, ideology. They have the same hatred. They're the, the same. So what needs to happen here is how do I get this word out? Because they know, they know I'm here. But the other thing is, it, it isn't just that the media or places or the universities are not going to let me come address Harvard. But even if I did, the pinch nose Negro, who in many ways is incorrigible and is making big money pontificating about the problems of the Hamite people. I've said three things here today that you have never, ever heard in your entire life miserable life if you're against me and in your abundant life if you're listening to me or informing. Hamite people have the greatest variation of coloring of any other people. And it's just off the chart. It'd be one thing if it was just one or two color. But Hamite people go from high yellow to dark mahogany and they're still in the that other people, the Chinese don't do that. The, the Japanese, the Indians in the South, in the subcontinent of India don't do Russians don't do that. The, the, the American Indians, the, the Redskins, they don't do that. Nobody, but nobody has this massive color problem but the Hamite people. And they have it. They have it because of the semen dumped into the womb of the Hamite woman by the Japheth, and also Shemite man. And so there you've got this, all these funny colors. That's number one. You never heard that before. Number two, you may have heard this, is that, and you may know this, and some of y'all are smart enough, some of you Japheth people, some of you Hamite people are smart enough to know this, and you talk behind your office worker, people that work, or your college students or college professors, y'all all going to college, going to Princeton or wherever it is, y'all are going, and many of y'all get behind the Hamite people's back, and y'all talk about this, that Hamite people want to be white. They don't want to be. Now, they came up in the 60s or 70s, black is beautiful. Well, I'm black and I'm proud. Jane Brown, say it loud. 
In order for James Brown to say I'm black and I'm proud, he had to cut off his process. James Brown had a process for a year. That is to say, he had a, a conkling put in his hair to try to make his hair look like he's a white man's hair. Conkling. But before he could release that song, I'm black and I'm proud, he had to get that conkling out of his hair because you don't wear conkling hair. You don't wear process hair if you are black and you're proud of being black. The way that Al Sharpton still wears conkling in his hair because he ain't black and he ain't proud. But secretly, the reason why Sharpton wears that in his hair is because he hates black hair. And here's one other thing. Y'all, you know, don't hate me. And I, I don't, yeah, I, listen, I think you're going to know I'm try, trying to tell you the truth. There is no other people on the planet, even Chris Rock did this, there's no other people on the planet who hate their hair as much as Hamite people. Nobody hates their hair the way Hamite people do. Nobody. Even old fat Al Sharpton sitting in the beauty salon getting his hair done. So Chris Rock alluded to this in a movie some time ago. But listen to me. Please listen to me. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to show you how messed up y'all. And you need to get rid of these pension old Negroes. You need to get rid of every one of these people, these Don Lemons, these Van Jones, these Eddie Glaws, these Cornell West, these uh, Michael Eric Dyson, these Barack Hussein Obamas, these, these mayors of, of, of Atlanta, these mayor of Houston, mayor of, of, of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, mayor of San Fran. You need to get rid of them. They're poison. They're poison. But there's nobody on the planet who has as many variations of color as does you know, the Hamite people. Now, they call themselves black or different names either. First they were Negro, then they were colored, then they're black, and then they're African American. Who knows what they're going to be tomorrow? But the other thing, there's nobody who hates their hair. Now, listen. Listen to me. I don't, I don't hate you. I have a word to save you. I don't know if you're going to listen to it. It's called Atla. But there's no other people from China to Vietnam to the Philippines to uh, the Indian Reservation who hates their hair the way black people hate their hair. And you ought to see these black women. I swear. I mean, they put tons and tons of horse hair and attach it to their hair. And then to make it, that's one thing, they just left it. Like that. Then they dye it blonde and red and chartreuse. It's a sickness. You're looking at a group of people who are, have hair hatred. Par extra. They hate their hair. They hate their, but that's not all. They also hate themselves as well. That hair business, now the men used to pro process their hair. The Clyde McFadden, the Drifters, and the, even the Temptations, they used to process their hair because they hated their natural hair. They hated the hair that God gave them. And some of the men have kind of cut back. Everybody except Al Sharpton has cut back. But the women have gone full blast in hair hating and wearing the horse of a hair of a horse, like a damn horse coming, got all that hair hanging on there, down their back. Then you got the Rastafarians who try to overemphasize the naturality of their hair and won't comb it, won't wash it. Let all kind of fleas grow in it and let it cake up on their head, just grow and cake up and cake up. That's another thing. It's, 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 it is a sickness. This is how many sicknesses. Their, 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 their coloration, their variations of colorations, they are unlike any other. Nobody has as many colors as they. Nobody hates their hair the way black people hate their hair. How many they are? And nobody hates each other the way Hamites hates each other. And nobody, no son has bitched out their mamas and their sisters the way young black men called rappers have bitched out their mamas and their sisters and been paid billions of dollars to bitch out their mamas and their sisters. So why is this important? It's important because Atla is God's answer to this. We started out by pointing out the men that were sleeping on the streets. <laughs> There's no other society. So you got three unprecedented in the history of the universe. There's never been anything like this. Men sleeping on the streets like this. A man may have fallen down, but not in, you don't see a man, groups and groups and groups of groups of men in one of the wealthiest cities in the world 
sleeping on the streets all over Harlem. Wherever you look, you have to step over them. That's, that's, that, that has not happened any place on the planet. There's no people on the planet that hate themselves as much. And the reason why they hate me and will not let my voice get out, they will not let me talk to the people. They will not let me tell the people what their problem is. They won't. The powers that be will not let me. The people who sell the horse hair will not let my voice get out to tell the people what their problem is and how they need to come home to Atla, how they need to come to righteousness, how they need to come to the word of God. They, they won't let that happen. They, so. They, 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 these powers, these liberals, these Eddie Glores, these Cornell West, these Don Lemons, these CNN, these Washington Post, they want to keep you sleeping on the street so they can blame white Southerners. That's why you're sleeping on the street. They want to keep you buying that horse hair. I don't know who the hell they blame for y'all hating your hair so much. Why you hate yourself like that? Why do you hate your hair? Why do you hate us? Al Sharpton, why don't you cut off that damn conkaline hair of yours? Why do you hate your hair so much? In this 21st century, you are still wearing conkaline in your hair? Why do you hate yourself? And why do you hate black people so much as to present yourself as such? Let me wrap this up by saying this, that um, Atla is the answer. And God has sent the word. He sent me to Harlem to proclaim it. He sent me to tell you. That's what the problem is. And the Hamites, they're Hamites, black people hate themselves. But when I tell them the truth, they call that hate. There is no other man on the planet that loves his brother as much as I do. Now, really, I'm a man about righteousness, whether you're Shemite, Japheth, or Hamite. If you're righteous, then I love you. Ain't no doubt about it. And I have a love that's wider than, than, than you can ever begin to imagine. But there's nobody. They, they, these profiteers from the absolute ignorance of, of Hamite people with all this skin color variation, all this horse hair, and all this bitching out of the, of the, of the nobility of the community want to keep you, want to, want to pay people like Jay-Z to bitch you out and then turn his wife into a bitch to gap her legs and to show her stuff. And, 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 and same thing with Mary J. Blige or all the rest of them or uh, Snoop Doggy. They all get paid money. They all get paid money to, to call you a bitch a, and call each other dogs. And, and, uh, but a voice like mine? And the only reason one would do that is because you have no respect for the woman. You have no respect for your brother to call him a dog. You have no respect for the woman. You have no respect for the community of people to get up and rap and, and, and have these Japheth people. And I'll say this, though I'm a Zionist, mainly the, the money behind the rappers comes from the Jewish coffers. They, they, it, uh, most Hamite, mo most Japheth men, uh, music entertainer people, if we're depending on just regular white men, the rap industry would have never gone anywhere. And the same thing with the media industry. They got people like Eddie Glaude and Cornel West and Don Lemon and, and Joy Reid and a bunch of others. That's all, that's all coming from the Jewish coffers. And Joy Reid, let me close with that. That is one sick woman. I mean, you talking about a hair-hating woman. I swear, she got more different hair colors and styles in Texas than Madame Cousart's Wax Museum. That woman needs to be put in jail somewhere for being such an insult to women everywhere. Joy Reid, lock her up. An insult to women everywhere of the Hamite nature. Her skin color, oh Lord have mercy, the way she has promoted herself and the way the, if you will, and I'm not against Jewish people, I'm a Zionist. That means I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more Jew than a Jew is. I'm a Zionist. However, the truth is the truth is the truth. They are the ones promoting this, if you will, uh, degradation. They've come up here to Harlem. They've taken their money 
and their banks, and they've ripped a new hole in the hearts of the people and put the men on the street and put the homosexuals, the LGBTQ people, in multi-million dollar brownstones once owned by the Hamites. I'm James Abbott Manning. I'm the Lord's servant. Help me get this message out. Listen, men and women of goodwill, please hear me. Um, Black Lives Matter must be defeated. The concept, their position of power at present, must be destroyed. Black Lives Matter must be destroyed. The Lord has sent his holy word to free you from the chains of all the lies, the false leaders that you hold high. They've placed illusions right before your eyes. You keep thinking, thinking, thinking that they will bring you change. All your marching, 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 yet still no victory. Confused. Oh, Lord, confusion of faces. Mm -hmm. Stop placing